Hi, my name is Monique Woodward and this is another episode of Community Designs. Today we're in the city of Glen Ira at Burren Reserve. It's a beautiful piece of landscape architecture. Let's go talk to the mayor about the project. Joining me on the Great Lawn is Mary Delahunty, Mayor of Glen Ira. Mary, tell us about this amazing park we're standing in. Isn't it incredible? Yes. It was a uh, water reservoir not so long ago really, decommissioned in the 70s but then uh, handed over to council for yeah. us to be the committee of management uh, in the late 80s. So we've had to really um, invest and take some cues from the community as to what we wanted to do but we always knew we wanted it to be a public space. Mm -hmm. And then we had to figure out what sort of public space would, would be future proof. Yep. Is it going to be purely active or some passive elements or are there going to be a mix of things? And, and so we led this long community consultation, yep. years in the making, yeah, uh, wow. before we came to what it is now, which is amazing, I think. So, you know, there's a big, um, there's sort of the relics from the mm. old reservoir. Talk about those and how you decided which bits to keep. Because it's such an unusual thing to be able to do, to turn a water reservoir into a park, yep. we really wanted to keep some elements that still allowed us to have a great use of the space yep. but that, that spoke to the history of it. Mm -hmm. So we decided that the walls that you can see around that we've kept, they, 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 um, they hark back to the history but they also provide some soundproofing to the residential properties yep. behind it and allow us to put an urban forest strip behind those walls as well. Yep. And then we knew that if we kept the walls we could actually have some playful elements off that too. Yep. And you can hear um, the balls being kicked around and the <laughs> yeah. basketballs. So there's a there's yeah. an informal active space yeah. that naturally comes from those walls. Yeah. And not only that, I think one of the most exciting elements of the park is this gallery, outdoor gallery space mm -hmm. that we can hang off those walls. Yeah. So then when you're keeping the walls, that really sort of dictates the, the colours and the elements of the park that need to stay as well. Yeah. And we really wanted the park to still be able to say, I was once a water feature basically. Yeah. So there's a lot of water, you can hear the running water at the moment, there's a lot of water elements throughout the park as well. Yeah. And so talk to us about some of the different elements in the park. You know, you've got the, um, the big play equipment jungle thing yeah. at the back. Yep. So the play equipment I think can be seen from the moon. It yep. is unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's a massive uh, climbing apparatus slide that was really for children who are a little bit older, the above five. So it's hard sometimes to find um, playgrounds that suit those older children, but we want we want wild kids in Glen Ira. We yeah. want them to stay as wild as possible yeah. and, and be able to climb and have fun. So massive play area. The play area is important though also because it's, um, it's accessible for anyone who may be experiencing mobility issues. And so we did a lot of consultation with um, the disability community in how we should make that as accessible as possible. Yeah. And there are some auditory components to it too. So there's a pipe that you can you know, yell into uh -huh. and you can yeah. hear it from the other end of the playground, all that sort of thing. Yeah. And there's water running through those play elements as well so that we keep reminding people of the history of the place that they're standing on. Then there are some um, peaceful areas not that you'd know it on a, on a sunny Sunday, but there are some peaceful areas. The, um, the sluice gate, which was the original um, entrance to the, to the water reservoir, we've also retained. Yep. And because that has a historical element to it, that, that becomes one of our peaceful areas. Yep. The great lawn that you're standing on, we imagine we'll be able to um, fit lots of picnickers, but also some events for yep. this, this community. Yeah, it's because a perfect it's, event space. It's a perfect event space, it's flash, it's green, and when, um, when everything's a little bit more established, the trees will provide a lovely bit of shade as well. Mm. And then there is a splash pad, a water splash pad, which um, uh, is heaps of fun, is used in all weather, but it's also got a hidden secret, so underneath it, uh, if you go down the steps, it will look like we're running a giant swimming pool. The water's yeah. all recycled um, throughout the park, so it's a completely self-sustainable park. And that, that plant room underneath is, is incredible, incredibly unique mm -hmm. uh, in a park of this size. Yeah, I was going to ask you about the sustainability aspects. There's you know, solar panels mm -hmm. along the wall. So the solar panels runs all the lighting. The lighting elements here in, in the park are amazing. If you see this place at night, yeah. it's... Uh, it, it's it's unique, um, not obtrusive, but also um, continues to safely light this sort of public area. Mm -hmm. And so it was important for us that it, it be a self-sustaining investment. 
and that's why the solar panels are there and the water treatment as well. So we wanted to be able to treat the water to a point where the children could safely play in it yep. uh, and we wanted to be able to, to, to do it all here and recycle it all here as well. Yep. Yeah, we noticed that, yeah, even though it's sort of quite chilly that there were still kids in the yeah, water. Yeah, they are crazy. Yeah. Uh, so certainly our brief of we want wild kids in Glen Ira yep. seems to have been met both the climbing apparatus and the water pad. You couldn't pay me to go near it on a day like today, but <laughs> no. it's, yeah, it's very popular. Yeah. And so talk about some of the narratives, you know, the, the conceptual narratives behind the design of the, the park itself. So once we've determined that you don't want to lose all of its, all of its heritage in that it was a, a water capture area for so long yeah. and that we want the walls to stay, that really does lead us down um, a certain narrative, as you say. Yeah. How do we want that to, um, to work in quite well? And so all of the elements needed to have a soft water feel about them mm -hmm. and that's why some of the shapes you can see on some of the other um, buildings and even the paths and and then the plinths that run around the paths yep. they've all got that feeling of a water element to them that was certainly the brief we gave um, to the panel of people who then designed this park yep. and we wanted um, we wanted that to keep running through everything that was put into the park we think that that will serve us well into the future but it's also it's the right thing to do in, in a pocket of land that served the community so well. Yeah it seems like it would be an extraordinary team of people that came together to deliver the project. Extraordinary team and it had great interest obviously from from the landscape architectural community. We had um, extraordinary lighting um, people who came along whatever the correct collective noun is for lighting people. We had extraordinary extraordinary designers and yeah. everyone was genuinely excited about the project. Yeah. When we came here to open the park, anyone who'd worked on it, you know, in a pair of steel cap boots or in any other capacity turned yep. up for the opening of it, which really, um, it gives you a great sense that you've done something right because mm -hmm. you want it to stay here obviously forever. Yep. You get those design elements right at the start, mm -hmm. that, that, that's future proofing for us. And the community consultation, which you already said was quite extensive. It was extensive and it went out in, in a number of ways. So um, very high level conceptual things at the start. What do you want to see yep. in your community? People certainly wanted places to gather and then we just needed to narrow it down. We have a, a lack of sporting fields in Glen Ira, so we really needed to know, did, did this actually need to serve a sporting purpose? Yeah. But the closer we got to, um, to the community and understanding their needs, that places together became more of an informal request. Mm -hmm. So we then started um, consulting with them on some individual design elements. Yeah. And so they've had, a, they've had a long role to play in, in what you can see now. Mm -hmm. And I think it's, it's why it's been so well embraced. Yeah. Mm. I mean, it is incredible that the council's been so agile to adjust mm. um, their expectations of the park and evolve that over time. Mm. And it, because it's such a long investment, that adjustment also has to come down to, to a financial one as well. So yeah. some of the things that we very much wanted to do, um, sometimes we, you just can't do budget capacity being what it is, but we have made sure that everything that is in here is really high quality. Yeah. So we don't. what we don't want to do is, is a do-over basically. Yeah. So this is it, this is how it looks and this is how it shall remain. Yeah. Yeah. And clearly there's, you know, a massive amount of people using it yeah, on, yeah. you know, a random Thursday. <laughs> yes, there's a massive amount of people using it. There's a um, tiny play element called the hamster wheel, which we should have put 16 of in because <laughs> that is a very, very popular piece yeah. of play equipment. You touched on Glen Ira having um, quite a small amount of public space. Do you mm. want to talk about that? Glen Ira as a municipality, it's landlocked. So we've, um, because of that and, and other reasons over time, we've actually got the lowest amount of open space in any Victorian municipality. Yep. So it's important that we're clever with the land that we have. Mm -hmm. And that's why we wanted to move on this piece of land as soon as we had enough money to do it properly. Yep. And having said that though, we're in a neighbourhood. There's houses behind us, houses to the, to the side of us, there's a tram running this way and a school not so far away. Mm -hmm. So when you move on a piece of land like this, you sort of have to take everyone along with you as well. Yep. This adds enormously to our open space, mm -hmm. but um, it, it can't, detract from the amenity of the people around you. So it was really important that we put in some of those elements to, to block the sound. Mm. It was important that we have car parking because it's such an incredible space. Mm. People are coming from miles away. And we're trying to teach people to use the tram <laughs> and, and ride on their bikes. And we've made sure we've got lots of bike parking and things around for that yeah, as perfect. well. Yeah. Um, and so do you find that the school groups use the park as well? I mean, they are. It's yeah. mostly an after school activity at the moment, yeah. but I imagine when the sun comes out a bit more, I can, I can see that the um, secondary school students will be wandering down as well, which is yeah. wonderful to see. Yeah. I think the more it's used at all hours of the day, 
uh, the more alive it becomes and yep. The and safer it is. Safer it is and it's genuinely heartwarming to see as I drive past of a night time. You can see people still playing basketball uh, against the basketball ring. It's yeah. fantastic because I don't know whether they would have been sitting inside were it not for this space. So yeah. that's exactly what you want to see. Yeah, thanks for chatting to us about this space. It's clearly been implemented um, at a very high quality. So should we go over and look at the Elsa Plaza? Yes, yes. So we made it to the Alstomic Plaza, joined by Mary again. Mary, talk to us about the brief for this amazing piece of landscape. Isn't it awesome? It's yes. little, uh, but it sits basically on top of a railway station and at the gateway to a really good, hearty, old fashioned shopping strip. Yep. So really what we wanted to do was activate the space, both for the commuters to be able to walk through safely. Yep. We wanted lots of interfaces to all the streets that it, that it touched. And we wanted a place for people to come and, and get some respite from, from the city. It's quite an urban context that we're mm -hmm. in. There's a train underneath us, there's trams passing by, and there's a fair bit of traffic going on. So yep. we really needed to provide peace, mm -hmm. but it needed to look like a city location as well. Yep. So I think that that's what's been captured here. There's a, there's a lot of hard elements but then there's some undulating land as well that the architects really um, kept uh, and, and were able to make best use of. Yeah, it seems to stitch into the context perfectly. I think so too. I think it's the mix of the green elements and the concrete and then the cafe is really opening out onto it. Yeah. It says that it's sort of alive and it doesn't look like a park park. No. It just looks like a part of the street. Mm. So for the traders in particular in this street, it, it's right and proper that they have a good gateway to, yeah. to their business. Mm. Uh, and that's what we wanted to provide here. And so was there a large amount of community consultation again for this project? This project had a, a different way of coming to life. This yep. is not council land, this is Vic Track land. Yep. So council's taken a long term 25 year lease over this land and then we had to um, put some money into the redevelopment. Yep. So the, the consultation was largely with traders instead of the community. Okay. We sort of know that the community um, wanted a space that, that works. But it's the traders that are important in this context because yeah. it's their gateway. Yeah. So we needed them to tell us exactly what it was that they needed. But we also let um, the architects and designers have a bit of free run here. Perfect. Because, yeah, <laughs> I know, I thought you'd like that. <laughs> <laughs> because that means that we wanted something that was a little bit cutting edge as yeah. well. Mm -hmm. it, there's a heritage um, overlay across the street. Yes. This should look contemporary so that it doesn't try and really play yeah. on those elements. Yeah. Some of the beautiful old trees that were left here means that it feels like it's been here for a long, long time whilst yeah. being really modern as well. Yeah. And talk about the different elements within the park. You've got the hill over here. Mm. The hill um, is really important, people to sit on it. There's some flat land as well. You see school, school groups coming and sitting on school students and people who are about to catch the train. There's a tiny little playground at the back, which is kind of cool for the parents who are you know, having a coffee around in the park. And then this particular building you can see behind you here is an old rifle range. It's yep. also heritage listed. Mm -hmm. uh, and we wanted to work with a cafe owner who would really bring that to life and yep. bring it out into the park as well to give it that, that yep. urban feel. Yep. All of these little sitting um, spaces here, mm. they are very, very well used of a weekend. So it's got yes. heaps going on. Yep. And uh, what the children have discovered is there's a very good scooter route that goes all the way yep. around the park, up and down, up and down, up and down. So we didn't realise that in the designing, maybe the architect did, but I certainly can see it now. Yeah. And it seems to be uh, work really well for different age groups as well. You've got, you know, potential Aperol spritzes up the top and, you know, a playground for the kids. Yeah, um, enjoyed responsibly, obviously. The Aperol spritzes at the back there are awesome. There's breakfast places nearby. And the kids weren't the main focus of this one, but we know that they always need it. There always needs to be a little playground or something for them to do. Yeah. So, um, so that's tucked away only because it, it it's, needs to provide a bit of safety to the main road there. Yeah. It's tucked away a little bit, but it, it's still a really good um, playground, got a lot of shade and, and, yeah. and a lot of fun things to do. Talk to us a bit more about some of the planting choices and I guess the creative freedom that was given to the architect. <laughs> Well, we identified some trees that we wanted definitely kept. They're quite significant yep. and they're, they're architectural in the way that they look and we thought yep. that they really added to the space. Yep. So anything else that really was planted um, around that needed to, to add and not detract from it. 
we've got some shady elements at the back there so we wanted to, to give the space for some mature trees and then we want some some hardiness um, and and we're okay with it looking quite contemporary so you didn't really need to soften the the concrete as much as you would in in when it's not such an urban sort of environment yeah so I'm pleased with how that's kind of come out I think the concrete elements are sharp and they're harsh but it matches because we're on a street that's yeah. quite busy yeah no it's beautiful with the blue stone of the street sort of or the you know the streetscapes sort of mm. flowing in and it seems very natural it does and it's uh, it was important to us that to enliven that interface before uh, it looked like this the, the park existed it was a very very daggy space um, and and it really didn't look like you knew how to come into it so yeah. it was really important that we made the entrances seem yeah. really fluid mm. so I'm glad that we've we've been able to capture that yeah. and both here at the front where the tram runs along but also at the back where it's a bit more residential mm. and that has sprung off some um, some other sort of trading areas around there as well. Yeah. So you can see that there is um, a natural sort of enlivenment that's come from being able to do it like that. And I think, you know, that seems to be a general attitude to, you know, revitalising some other projects or, and other plots of land around the Glenara Council. Well, that's it. With the lowest amount of open space, you've got to be clever yep. about how you use your land. And as I said, this is not our land necessarily, but it doesn't mean that we shouldn't invest heavily in it because yep. it's important to the space. Yep. So we're trying to be as smart as we possibly can, even though it's a really small spot. Yep. If, if it exists and nobody's using it, then it really doesn't add to your open space count. So if it yep. exists, people need to be able to use it. Um, yeah. And now you can see around you, you know, there's people lying down having a picnic, there's people having a coffee, there's probably people having an Aperol Spritz, which I'm incredibly jealous of, but <laughs> people playing. So all yeah. the age groups seem to come here yeah. no matter what time of day it is, but yeah. over night time it's really lovely to see yeah. everyone get off the train and walk through a park on their way home. Yeah, glorious. Mm. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to go chat to some traders now. Okay, pleasure. Joining me on the terrace is Gerald from the Goat House Restaurant. Talk to us about why this space is so important to you. Okay, look, uh, since uh, the space, the, the park here has been, uh, been developed, it's been fantastic for us because we've got uh, a decking that looks straight out onto the park. Yeah, that's your restaurant just there. Just right there, yeah. <laughs> And um, whilst it's great to be by the fire in winter and, and beautiful days like today, our guests and our patrons can stand out and sit out on the, on the decking mm -hmm. and enjoy the beautiful sunshine. Yeah. And, um, you know, it's been fantastic for business. It's, it's grown since the park's been opened. Yeah, amazing. Um, and what's your favourite design feature of the park? Oh, look, I, I love the, the terrace here, the way that people can gather and sit around the area. And I love the trees. Um, obviously, in, in winter, they lose their leaves and it, the sun comes through. Um, mm -hmm. But also in summer, it gives us protection from the heat of the day. So yeah. I think everything's been thought of. Yeah, awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for your comments. No it's problems at all. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Joining me is Eddie, owner of Classic Cinemas. Eddie, talk to us about why this space is so important to you. Well. Elsterwick's important to me, yep. and this particular microcosm of Elsterwick is particularly important. Um, we've got our business, the Classic Cinemas, across the road, which we've had for over 20 years, uh, and which is a bit of a community cultural centre in itself. Yep, of um, I do so. My office is there. I do yoga, <laughs> three minutes walk from there. Yep. I eat at all the restaurants around here. Uh, drink coffee a lot. Have a lot of meetings in the space. Yep. And our, from the business perspective, uh, it's fantastic. Our customers come and, you know, if we've got a kid's party, yep. um, the kids will be there seeing their, their great movie in the dark and throwing popcorn around. And then they might cross the road and, you know, sing happy birthday uh, with a cake and candles <laughs> right here, right next to us. Yeah, exactly. So it's multi-dimensional multi importance for me. Yeah, awesome. No, I can totally imagine kids coming here and hanging out before and after the show. Kind of yeah. 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 Perfect. Yeah. Today's the perfect day to experience the, you know, the plaza and, you know, beforehand, I didn't mind it before, it was, you know, clearly, you know, in disrepair and it was kind of almost like a bit of a, a bit of a dangerous forest. <laughs> okay. Now it's, you know, much better and really uh, has so many little spots, little nooks and crannies to read books and to gather, you know, if you want to, you know, be with groups of people and it's really uh, a joy. Thank you so much for joining us. No worries.
Joining me is Toby from Bang Bang. Toby, talk to us about uh, this building. Great. Well, um, I work for a small group and a few years ago we um, found this building, a, a disused old rifle club. Yep. And, um, in need of a bit of TLC yes. and um, with a lot of works that were happening in the area with the parklands or getting rejuvenated yeah. uh, we came up with Bang Bang. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and so and who was the architect who used? Uh, we used Six Degrees mm -hmm. um, they um, did the the framework beautiful base build yeah. and uh, yeah they've done a lot of hospitality gigs so coming this one coming up we thought it'd be yeah. a great combination. Yeah it's, it is kind of amazing um, how the building kind of dissolves. Um, that's been part of the design obviously, it dissolves into the garden. Sure, yeah there's some existing brickwork at the front from the old rifle club and then some some new buildings at the back but we really wanted it to feel like part of the, the new park yeah. and um, kind of not quite sure if you're in the park or when you when you enter the venue which has been really nice, kind of feeds in, people just kind of stroll in from all different directions. And so who did you use for the interiors? Uh, we used a group called Chamberlain Architects yep. um, so they helped us with um, some of our, our design work and uh, yep. and the interior fit out which is really beautiful. Yep. Yeah. And so I can imagine that you open all hours and that activates the park. Yeah, breakfast, lunch and dinner. Um, yep. So we open quite early um, and then stay open um, well into the evening, um, drinks yep. after the sun goes down. Yep. So yeah, we've noticed a lot more traffic through the park since we opened and also with the development um, through here, there's a lot really good lighting so people feel a lot more comfortable either walking through and um, kind of maybe finding themselves in with us or, or just hanging out in the park after dark. Do you get a lot of sort of parents uh, in there where the kids are yeah. sort of out here playing? Definitely, prams yeah. and dogs and, yeah. and the whole lot. So yeah, we've yeah. got a great playground just nearby. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's, it's nice. Some people even request when they're booking that they get a little spot that they can see <laughs> the park or see the courtyard for their kids to run around. Yeah, yeah. cute. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure. Thanks. Thanks so much for joining us for another episode of Community Designs. See you next time.